Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, January 11th. According to Automotive News, Tesla has become the top luxury brand in the U.S. automotive market. The first time in almost 25 years that an American automaker has claimed the title. Foreign automakers, especially German, such as Audi, Mercedes, and BMW, have historically been dominant. But taking a look at early data, it points to a huge lead by our favorite EV frontrunner. In 2022, the top-selling luxury brands are Tesla with 491,000 units, BMW with 332,388, and Mercedes in third place with 286,764. Back in 2021, BMW had beaten Tesla by about 23,000 units based on estimates. But since Tesla had a pretty good year, they've won out by over 100,000. This is largely thanks to a huge production ramp at several facilities and expansions. During CES last week, Tesla vehicles inside the tunnels dug by the Boring Company moved almost 100,000 people across the event center. The Las Vegas Convention Center Loop is the Boring Company's first full-scale loop project currently in commercial use. We got our first ride last year during the show, and this hasn't changed too much. While the ambition is to have a complex tunnel system underneath entire cities, the Las Vegas Convention Center Loop is only one and a half miles long with three stops. The company also added a stop at the Resorts World Hotel and Casino, which is the closest one to the convention center. The company also said that the rides were, on average, less than two minutes, and the average wait time to get in a Tesla vehicle was less than 10 seconds. Stay tuned for my personal opinion on the Las Vegas Loop from the Boring Company. Tesla is again rumored to be nearing a deal to build a factory in Indonesia, which would secure a lot of nickel for the automaker. This isn't the first time that we've seen such signals. As a matter of fact, there have been rumors about Tesla setting up shop in Indonesia for years now. Back in 2020, we reported on Tesla allegedly being in talks with the Indonesian government to secure a new nickel venture. Then last year, Tesla sent a group to Indonesia to talk with the government, and Elon Musk himself met with the president, Jocko Widodo. This last May, investment minister Bahali Ladialdilia said that Tesla had agreed to build a battery and electric vehicle plant. A few months later, a government official said that Tesla secured a deal for $5 billion worth of nickel in Indonesia, but no confirmation has come quite yet. Now that you are up to speed, here is the latest. The rumors are starting back up with a report from Bloomberg, stating that Tesla is nearing the preliminary deal for a factory in the country. They write, quote, The plant would produce as many as 1 million cars a year, the people said, in line with Tesla's ambition for all its factories globally to eventually reach that capacity. The discussions include plans for multiple facilities in the country serving different functions, including production and supply chain, one of the people said. A deal hasn't been signed and the agreement could still fall through, said the people, asking not to be identified as the talks are confidential. Footage has emerged of the Tesla vehicle allegedly on full self-driving that caused an eight-car pileup in San Francisco back in November. The footage shows a classic case of phantom braking, or what appears to be, but it was also during level two autonomy where the driver should have responded. News outlets had titles that read something along the lines of Tesla on self-driving mode because that's what the driver told the police. But to catch you up to speed on Tesla's admittedly out-of-step nomenclature, here's a little bit of background. Tesla does not have an actual self-driving mode. They do have something that Tesla calls the self-driving package. It includes beta access, which is called full self-driving, but not everyone is on that, and nonetheless, the name doesn't deliver the namesake function as of yet. Since the responsibility ultimately rests with the driver and not the Tesla system, it is considered a level two driver's assist system. In any event, a news outlet called The Intercept obtained the footage of the accident and it clearly shows a Tesla vehicle abruptly coming to a stop for no apparent reason. This kind of occurrence has happened enough that Tesla made a move to address it in recent software improvements. After delivering only 122 Cadillac Lyric EVs in 2022, General Motors says that it was purposefully slow with the rollout as it worked through issues with its new electric vehicle and also to ensure that customers receive the best quality. Cadillac announced that the vehicle launched and sold out on their order system in only 19 minutes some time ago, and now that claim seems quite airtight. 
According to a new report from the Detroit Free Press, the slow rollout was deliberate, as Cadillac has been studying the performance and response of the early owners. Cadillac has also required engineers and specialists to inspect the Lyric while teaching technicians how to work on it before dealers are allowed to deliver them. The company is presumably sitting on a large stockpile of inventory as they get their ducks in a row for a very busy 2023 year. I actually got to drive the Cadillac Lyric last year. I thought it was great. Super quiet, really slick. I did enjoy it. During Auto Expo 2023, Suzuki showcased the world premiere of its EVX Concept EV, which is an SUV. Although the Suzuki brand has faded from the top of minds of many U.S. consumers, the Japanese automaker still operates more than 30 production facilities in over 20 countries around the globe. While we may not see this vehicle hit the States, it is fun to catch up with an old flame, I suppose. Executives from Suzuki unveiled the EVX Concept EV in front of a crowd in India. The arising specs, such as a 60 kWh battery and a range amounting to 342 miles using an Indian testing method. It'll be interesting to see how this Suzuki EV hopefully evolves into a 2025 production. Okay, it is opinion time. I don't have terribly fast expectations for the Hyperloop and shuttle system that was envisioned by Elon Musk. Maybe I just don't see the connection. The Hyperloop was designed to be a high-speed personnel carrier going great distances, presumably underground. And the loop system in Vegas is nowhere near that, since it's only carrying people a short 15-minute walk away. The Vegas system seems to resemble the shuttle system that was made famous in the animation from the company. In it, cars are elevated underground to travel alongside others in a very vast tunneling network. Also, this doesn't really match up with what happened in Vegas. Like a lot of things in Las Vegas, the loop was very colorful and entertaining, but wildly overbuilt. I feel like there are other methods of doing the same thing better for cheaper. Las Vegas already has a monorail system, one that I used many times during the show, and I also used bikes and the public bus to get around. Are these systems quite broken or just not glamorous enough for people to even consider? In today's community comment found on YouTube, Bill Kerr outlines a use case for the Mazda MX-30, a car that I lambasted yesterday for poor specs and a high price. Bill compares the range to his experience with a Chevy Volt Hybrid, a car that I'm told sold more people on pure EVs rather than continuing with hybrids for their next purchase. Indeed, 100-mile range is quite usable for the Mazda in predictable daily driving, but these good arguments have been evaporating in the last few years. With EVs getting into mid-range car prices and on-the-horizon cheap car prices, I really don't see a place for the Mazda MX-30 in 2023. It may have been built to have a rotary range extender, but I'm not a big fan of those systems either. As a matter of fact, BMW had their hybrid or slash EV i3 model, and I've been critical of that car for a long time. I do believe that that BMW was designed by some other company, and BMW just slapped their logo on it. I can't prove it, but I remember when they were working on the electric Mini a long time ago, and then the i3 came seemingly out of nowhere with a totally strange in my opinion, not very BMW design. Also, more recently, BMW started using the name i3 for a totally different vehicle, further distancing themselves from that subpar EV and signaling to me that my suspicions are a tiny bit more meritful. Meritful? Is that a word? In any case, I feel like the Mazda MX-30 is just a car that is embarrassing for the entire EV scene. When people say that electric cars are impractical and cost too much money, that's a car that they can point to today that really makes that case. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.